Good evening. Welcome to this special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Tuesday, May 25th, 2010. <coughs> Would the town clerk call the roll, please? Chair Sukayata. Here. Councilor Guvenali. Here. Councilor Jordan. Here. Councilor Lennon. Here. Councilor Sherman. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. And Councilor Walsh. Here. Please join me in the pledge. <coughs> Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we met yesterday briefly, so I doubt that we have many town council reports and correspondence, but I will check on that. Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, it is now the period for citizens. It's their opportunity to discuss items not on the agenda. So if you would like to speak about something that's not on the agenda, please come forward. Okay, seeing no one coming forward, we'll move on. Um, <clears throat> Tonight is the night when we, uh, we, the council, vote on the budget. We've received recommendations from the Finance Committee, and I'll turn this over to our Finance Chair, Sarah Lennon, in just a second. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that these rather lengthy draft motions that we have uh, before us and that are on the website are based on the amounts that were set for public hearing. So our first item is item number 69, which has to do with the adoption of the municipal budget. And I will turn this to Councillor Lennon uh, for the Finance Committee's recommendation on this item. Can I give a motion? Or if you want to say anything about it. If you want to say anything about it as an introduction, that's fine, or otherwise. I'd just like to thank um, the town manager and all of his department heads for doing an amazing job putting together his budget, uh, which is responsible and uh, frugal. And um, with that, I'll make a motion. I move we adopt the municipal budget for the fiscal year 2011 as presented in item 69 in the printed agenda. Is there a second? And moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, I just want to echo the thanks of Councillor Lennon um, to thank everybody who works in, municip in the municipal government for all their hard work and the department heads and Mike McGovern, the manager, for their work on the budget this year, as well as Sarah Lennon, who has led us on the Finance Committee. So let's move the question. All in favor of the adoption of the municipal budget. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving on, item number 70 has to do with the Cumberland County assessment, part of our budget. Sarah? I move we approve the uh, Cumberland County assessment portion of our budget, uh, amounting in $947,600,000, um, as set forth in our printed agenda. Sarah, second. And moved and seconded. Is there <coughs> any discussion? I would just note for people who might be watching that we really don't have any control. We in the town don't have any control over this budget. The county just divvies up the county budget and sends us a check, and we are legally obligated to pay it. Okay, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item 71, approval of the local homestead exemption funds. Sir? I move we approve the inclusion in the fiscal year 2010 budget uh, in the amount of 185000 for the local share of the homestead exemption as set forth in our packet. Is there a second? Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 72, the approval of the Community Services Special Funds Budget. Sarah? I move we approve for the inclusion in the fiscal year 2010 general fund budget, the approval, the Community Service Special Funds Budget as set forth in our packet. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? 
It's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Item number 73 has to do with the property tax levy limit. Sarah. I move that we adopt the property tax levy limit as set forth in item 73 in our packet. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? 6-1. Um, item number 74 has to do with the approval of the school budget number. Sarah? I move we approve the school budget as set forth in our packet. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Jim. Councilor Walsh. Um, well, I want to speak to the, to the council. Um, we, have, um, we have council rules, and they talk about the conflict of interest or perception of the conflict of interest. And I want to bring to the attention of the fellow counselors that uh, my wife is a teacher in this school system, has been one, this is her 10th year. Um, she is not affected by this vote in any way. Um, I don't believe that we benefit financially from the actions that are taken by the town council because we don't differentiate or delineate where the monies go within this budget. Um, I also think that I want to make it clear to my fellow counselors that I think I've been objective <coughs> through the entire process of, of building these budgets and listening to the various scenarios that have been presented and have been diligent in my due diligence in, this, in, in looking at the, the issues as a town councilor representing all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I believe on a, I can be unbiased today, and I think I've demonstrated that in, um, in my past service and will continue to do so, but I want to bring it to your attention that I, I do have a, a, a spouse who works in the system, and I think as part of, part of the council rules, it's important to bring it to your attention, and you have to make whatever decision you have to make as to whether I should be allowed to weigh in on this vote. Thank you very much. Is there anybody who would like to ask, the way this usually goes <coughs> with the council is we we have an opportunity to ask any counselor that brings it brings a potential conflict or the appearance of a conflict um, to our attention. We have uh, a chance to just ask questions, discuss it briefly, and then take a vote as to whether we think the counselor in question should accuse him or herself. So does anybody want to ask any questions or? I'll make a remark. I think using the standard of conflict of interest, anyone who's a Landowner or capable as it would appear to have a conflict of interest in voting on taxes, which is some of what we're doing. So um, uh, I don't believe we have conflicts of interest in that respect. Parents of children in schools similarly are impacted by what happens with the school budget. Um, one might perceive it as a conflict. I don't see that as a conflict either. So I don't see any problem with Jim's position. It's really not any different than the rest of ours. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Jessica and then David. Has there been any official legal opinion rendered on the situation? Has the town attorney or anybody, MMA or anybody been consulted, Michael? Yeah, I, I did check with the Maine Municipal Association this afternoon, their legal services. Uh, I received an email from them about 6.30 saying they tried to call us back and the line was busy. Uh, but, you know, we did on our own review the statute and uh, the council rules as well as the past practice uh, on this particular issue, and I'd be happy to share any of that with you if requested to do so. Does it, <clears throat> excuse me, does anybody want to hear any of that, Mike? No? David? Well, I, I would be certainly curious to hear what the past practice has been, but my view is since this issue of the school budget will ultimately be decided by the voters, I, again, I just don't see the... <clears throat> potential for conflict here in that the voters are the ultimate decision makers on the school budget. But I, I certainly would be interested, and I think for the purposes of information, it would be interesting to find out what the past practice has been. Okay. Michael, can you share with us that information? The past practice is that whenever there's been a council member who's had a family member who's been an employee of the school department, they have never abstained on the school budget. Uh, several examples would be William H. Jordan, who served on the town council. 
uh, for about 40 years off and on. Uh, his, uh, his wife uh, worked uh, for the Cape Elizabeth School Department uh, for many, many years. Uh, we've had other counselors whose, uh, whose spouses have been uh, ed techs in the school system and they've never abstained. But there's no known instance of any uh, council member uh, abstaining or being required to abstain uh, when a spouse, partner, husband, wife uh, has been a member of uh, the school staff. Or, or child in the school system. Or had a child that was in the school system. I don't recall any of those, but okay. yeah. Well, I mean, I would yeah. think there would have been a lot of abstentions or so. And I just want to make a point that before I ran for election in the first place, I did spend a great deal of time discussing this very issue with Michael and with Deb to just make sure there wasn't a conflict. That, that these types of things would not crop up at the 11th hour, you know, on top of a decision like this. And I felt confident that going forward and running for election that there weren't going to be uh, conflicts as it comes to this kind of issue. But, but again, with David, there, we, we go to the voters anyway with the final number, and it's their decision in the end whether they voted up or down. So. There. <clears throat> Not to be bitter, but just to remind you that he got the most votes of any of us, so obviously the citizens <laughs> felt like he could be disinterested. Thank you for that, Sarah. Appreciate it. I'll get you next time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Matt, uh, Chair. I might have, uh, Ann, I, I, I might have misunderstood your question. W w did you say anyone who's, did anyone ever abstain because the kid was in the school system or because the kid was an employee of the school system? Either. Okay, I, I thought you meant as an employee of the school system. My point no was one that, ever, that would have disqualified many, many Yes, people. no one has ever abstained for either reason. I, okay. I didn't mean to avoid that. No, no. That's, Someone that's might wonder okay. if I thought any counselor ever had kids the way I answered it. So. <laughs> okay. David. And in the interest of full disclosure, my son has worked for the community services program as a rec camp counselor last year, and I believe perhaps this year. So, uh, Ditto. And I, I, it did, so I just put it out there. And I don't believe there's any need for me to recuse myself on that basis. Yes. I'd also like to point out that <clears throat> I appreciate very much Jim's forthcoming. And there's always the concern about even the um, appearance of bias or impropriety. However, I don't think that exists here. Also, um, we're not discussing teacher salary contracts. That's no part of what we're discussing tonight. And so I, I, I don't have any problem with that. And I've thought about it a great deal in the last hour. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank I, you. I, I, would, I would add that um, where I, I am on this one is that I, I'm not sure I agree with the reasoning that just because the voters are going to vote on the budget, that it doesn't matter what we do. Because I think it does matter what we do, and we, we should try to do the right thing. Be that, so that's not my reason. But, but I certainly do not feel that the, any finan potential financial impact on the Walsh's is material to any degree that would really influence um, Councillor Walsh's voting. And I take him as, at his word that he has no conflict. And I very much appreciate his bringing that to our attention on TV, where everybody can see and hear and know what's going on. Because it's just a good thing when we conduct our processes openly, because people can have confidence in the results. With that, um, I'd like to make a motion that we, uh, um, how would I do this, that we not, that we, we allow um, Councillor Walsh to continue in voting on this item, that we, that we do not ask him to recuse himself. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of that motion? Staining? Well. Okay. <laughs> I think... Okay. Again, <laughs> okay. Council rules are that you abstain. Yeah, so. in my understanding is that I, I am to abstain from any. So it's unanimous. Thank the you. voters. Thank you very much. Okay, I will turn this back to Sarah. <laughs> Item number seventy-four, please. Okay, what do I do? Make a motion again? Uh, <clears throat> yes, just for, for the sake of everybody who might have lost track of what the motion was. I move that we approve the school board budget as set forth in our printed agenda this evening. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Jessica. OK. 
Okay, I'll start with my little speech. <laughs> um, first of all, I, I would like to commend all the members of the school board for all their hard work. I, I did attend several of their workshops and could see how they were struggling and trying very hard, and I do appreciate that. I think we have very dedicated people. I think we have very dedicated teachers and very dedicated staff. Um, nevertheless, when I look at the whole picture of what is happening in our country and our state, um, we are in the worst economic situation since the Great Depression. The state of Maine is broke, and many of us have fr friends and family who are in severe situations. I mean, I certainly do. I imagine some of you do as well. I'm not particularly happy with the municipal budget. I think that although it's coming in very low at a one-tenth of one percent increase, and that is about $6,700, which is to help fund retirement for municipal and non-teaching school employees, still I think in the current economy we could have done better. I think that it would be a very good idea to work hard to give some money back to the capitalists of the citizens who work hard for their money. I would love to see a decrease in a little tax uh, money back to our citizens. So, um, and I move, as I move on to the school budget, um, there, of course, that is, you know, the, the bigger issue. It is 65% uh, percent of the entire municipal budget. And as a town councilor, I think stewardship of tax dollars is, of our tax dollars is of utmost importance to our citizenry. Um, I'd like to point out that, um, again, the school budget is 65.8 percent of the entire town budget, and it's the highest percentage of the town budget in 11 years. If school spending had stayed at the same rate of increase as the municipal side has, has in these last 11 years, the school budget before us today would be $2.3 million less than it is. In fiscal year 5-6, we had 1,847 students in our system. In 09-10, as of October 1, we had 1,708. That is a 7.5% 7 decline in enrollment. Yet, our cost per pupil has gone up at a minimum of 15%. We don't have 09-010 numbers on cost per pupil as set by the state yet. If I estimate that using the same increases since 0506, it would put us at 18 percent. But again, I don't have that number. It's not available with the state. So to reiterate, our enrollment in the last five years is down 7.5 percent, yet our cost per pupil is up at least 15 percent. And I, that is, that's the type of figure that I just can't get my head around. I think that efficiency, efficiencies need to take place everywhere. And I think that the school budget is just as, it is just as important that that be looked at in those terms as anything else, particularly in the financial situation that many of us are in today. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Sure. I too want to thank the members of the school board for the tremendous amount of work and dedication that went into preparing this budget and to the school superintendent, the building principals, uh, and frankly the entire staff of our great school system in Cape Elizabeth. I am proud to be a resident of Cape Elizabeth uh, for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is that our schools provide our children with a tremendous education. And I don't think we should ever lose sight of that fact. Uh, there are a lot of statistics that have been roaming around the internet uh, in the last 24 hours. And uh, I, my eyes started to glaze over this afternoon when I tried to make sense of it all. But at the end of the day, uh, what I am observing, what I'm hearing, what I'm reading, is that there isn't waste, there isn't inefficiency, uh, there aren't programs that aren't valuable to our children's education in the, in the schools. Uh, what I look at at the end of the day is our school system providing our children uh, with the skills, uh, the outlook uh, to move forward into college and beyond and to be productive citizens later in life. And personally, uh, I believe from my own experience with my own children 
that that is definitely the case, and I'm very, very proud of that. Um, it, it gets a bit discouraging sitting up here and hearing from citizens, and I've completely gone away from my script, um, uh, to, 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 see, to keep hearing this notion that there is waste and that there is inefficiency. And there may be statistics that might cause people concern, but it, it's just not there. And, and, and the key is the quality of the education. And I'm sure that all of us sitting up here can find statistics that may support their argument. Uh, I can throw some out that the cable is the first spending per pupil is less than all of the uh, comparable school districts in the greater Portland area. That's a tremendous thing. But I wouldn't be so proud of that if the education they provided to our children wasn't any good. And I think what our school system has done has tried to be efficient, has tried to be mindful of the tax burden on its citizens, but at the, 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 the primary goal, though, that it's never lost sight of is a quality education for our children. And I know even the council members up here who may vote against this budget agree with me that that should be the number one goal of the school system. And I understand that there is this desire to keep taxes flat or to be mindful of the tax burden on our citizens. I get all of that, but when I see a school budget that is going to result in a modest tax increase of 1.8% overall to the tax bills of the citizens in our town, and I look at the tremendous services that our, our town provides to its citizens both on the municipal side and the school side, I'm proud to endorse that budget. And ultimately, the voters get to decide, but I hope and I urge all voters out there, when it comes time to vote on this budget on June 8th, that they vote yes acceptable. And again, I want to thank the school board, the school administrators for their dedication and hard work. You've done a terrific job. Thank you. And you were very coherent given that you went completely off track. So. No, I can see what I missed. Penny, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any comments? Uh, sure. First, I want to say thank you, David, for saying that your eyes glazed over after seeing the uh, plethora of numbers flying around the internet today. In between uh, planting strawberries, harvesting beet greens, <laughs> and uh, uh, receiving a shipment of flowers, uh, I would periodically try to grab a moment on uh, email because I knew there was going to be a flurry of activity. And, there was way more than I could keep up with. But anyways, I first want to, I do want to thank the uh, school board and all of the administrators. I was just um, extremely impressed about the amount of time and energy and the uh, level of detail that everybody was willing to get into and uh, in order to develop this budget for our schools. Uh, I also want to thank my peers for being so good with numbers because I, I get to reap the benefits of their uh, talents. And um, I don't want to repeat a lot around student-staff ratios, student-teacher ratios, CPIs, and other numbers because that's not where I where I come from. Yes, I am a taxpayer, and yes, I think about dollars, and yes, every day I think about the bottom line. Um, I have talked to many of the school board members, and I have uh, pushed and tested and said, what else could you have found in this budget in order to ideally get us to a zero increase? And uh, each person I talk to, they may have a a different way of coming at the answer, but they feel extremely confident that what they came out with was uh, what works best at this point in time for the students and for the citizens of the town. Um, what I will say is that I was one of those special ed students. Whenever I look at the school budget, I look at what you're doing for students like me. I was one of those young people who athletics kept me in school, and it saddens me to see what's happened. Um, I was a social worker in a school, and I worked with many students, 
And I truly believe that what we need to do is not look at dollars. We need to look at the whole student, the whole person, and ensure that what we're doing is the best thing for the young people of this town. I am a taxpayer. I'm a working class taxpayer, and I'm proud to say that. I count every penny that I have. And when I think about where can I spend my dollar best, I will tell you it's on the education of young people. Because education is the cornerstone of our town. It's the ticket into the game. It gets us into the colleges. It gets us into graduate school. I cannot tell you how much Cape Elizabeth School, and that is my background, has done for me. And I would hate to see if we went to a zero budget, what would happen to our schools. Because when I looked at the programs that would be cut, when I looked at the students that would be touched, it's not the extremes, it's the bell curve, it's the middle student. And those are the students that we can't leave behind. And so do I support this budget? I've thought long and hard. And when I got home from work at 7 o'clock tonight, I said, <clears throat> write your thoughts down. And this is what came out. So I support this budget. I vote, I will vote to move it to the citizens. And I hope that people recognize that we can't leave the middle students behind because that's what's going to happen. Thank you very much. Anybody on this side? I'll go. Well, it's going to be hard to say anything that's more impactful than Penny and, and David said already. But I, too, um, endorse this school budget. and want to thank the school board for all the hard work and diligent effort they put into it. Um, and I do hope that the citizens of our town vote for it because uh, I think, obviously, schools are the foundation for the town. There are a variety of statistics we could all look at that prove one thing or another, uh, whether the schools are a uh, little less efficient than they might be or a little more efficient than they might be. To me, the bottom line is what are we spending per student? The state does provide us with normalized figures that allow us to compare against towns. And when I look at this and I look at the fact that we provide an education to our students which is at least as good as our peers, if not better, at a cost that's substantially below, it tells me that we've got an efficient system that's working well. I'd be a little less confident of that if our cost per student were higher, but we're substantially below South Portland and Yarmouth and Portland and Falmouth and Cumberland to a, large, to a significant measure. Um, so you really don't need to know a whole lot more than that to figure out that we're delivering something that's high quality at, um, at, a, at a good cost. It's very hard to say what the actual cost should be specifically, but as companies normally do, they look at their output and they look at their cost compared to competition, and that's what drives their decision making. So um, I'm happy with that. The second thing I, I'd like to add to this, however, is the, the concern that, um, that a lot of folks in town can't sustain, um, might not be able to sustain any tax increase. And I recognize that as a concern, but I would also recognize the fact that the schools and the natural beauty of Cape Elizabeth are the two critical elements that give us the highest property values in the state. Um, you don't have to have a meaningful change in the perception of quality in Cape Elizabeth for it to have a very meaningful effect on the value of our properties. Uh, the the uh, median value of a home in Cape Elizabeth is about $250,000, $260,000. A 1% change in the value of the median home is about $2,500. So we're talking about a very small tax increase here. Uh, for folks who that might be a burden, I'd also suggest that look at the value of your home and at some point in time there may be a need to sell or use it as equity for a loan. If that value declines by a minor 1%, that's $2,500 in equity value. So I think that's important too. So bottom line, I think we should support this and I hope uh, the residents come out and vote on June 8th and support this as well. We'll leave the two chair people to talk at the, at the end. Um, again, um, thanks for allowing me to participate in this vote. Um, I'm very passionate about education and spent a good portion of my career um, as a teacher and as a principal and educated four children in the Cape Elizabeth schools and the last one will graduate this year. And um, it's a little bit about paying forward. Uh, these kids have gotten a tremendous education here. And they, every day, I'm reminded of that and what they do and how they contribute in the communities they currently live in. 
because they've never forgotten the foundation that they've received in Cape Elizabeth. I also wish to thank the school board and the administrative team and teachers. I have one of those in my house, and I can tell you how she's participated in a ground bottom up approach to building this budget. You folks have set a brand new standard and elevated the discussion about the budget and about what goes into a budget in a school system. And I would suggest it's going to be a tough act to follow because you folks have done a great job this year. Um, I come from a business background where one has a three-year rolling plan. And one of the problems I see sometimes in municipal government is that we work year to year to year. It would be great if we had a three-year plan that we could sit here and have some understanding of what might take place. One of the good things that's happened in this budget in this school system is that they have planned for some possibilities. We'll call them possibilities because I want to remain optimistic. And I think that's good planning, that's good administration, and frankly, that's good for the taxpayers of Cape Elizabeth. The final point I want to make, since I make my living selling real estate, make no mistake about it, the school system in this town is why people buy homes in this town. Whether you are an empty nester, because you know the value is there, you know that you reclaim that value when it's sold, or whether you have children that are about to enter the school system, or you have students that are in the grades 1 through 12. Uh, I have uh, recently had folks spend an inordinate amount of time on the website researching what's happening in this town and the debate and the discussion whether they just entered it for that moment in time they walk away with questions about what we are and what we're doing what do we believe in and how passionate we are about our school system in a couple of cases they've gone elsewhere because they do not wish to be part of this constant discussion about what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and what we really believe in. Because the last several years here, that has been the debate. And it's well documented. And I just suggest as we go forward that the best thing we can do is invest in our young people, and that investment is in the citizens of Cape Elizabeth at all levels. And I'd be pleased to vote tonight for this budget sending it to the citizens for them to validate, up or down. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah? Um, I will echo many of the sentiments that have already been said, but I really would love to begin with many, 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 many thanks to um, our superintendent and the principals of the three schools, um, all of the faculty who pitched in and helped, and of course to the seven ridiculously hardworking members of the school board. Um, you all have put together a budget that I find uh, to be exceptionally responsible, um, frugal, responsive, and um, excellent. It, it, secondly, I'd like to extend a thanks to um, the citizens of this great community. I am astonished every year how much they stay involved through this rather protracted process. Uh, not only do they stay involved, but they stay passionate, interested, vocal, and, um, and that, I believe, is one of the, the reasons that this community is so great and so strong and that our schools are so strong. In fact, studies show that parental involvement is one of the the, the cornerstones of a, of a first-rate school in education. So I think we passed that test with flying colors. Um, I would like to just quickly remind people that in this discussion of 0% versus some small increase, the school board actually did put together a 0% budget um, and presented it to the community and asked them to come um, weigh in. And it was, I would say, resoundingly sent back for edits. Over 100 people showed up and they gave um, what I found to be very moving, passionate, articulate um, defenses, 
pleading, really, for each of those programs that had been on the chopping block to please be put back in the budget for different reasons. I thought the kids were amazing, but the parents, the teachers, everybody, I mean, down to every um, drama class and secretary and program, there was essentially the community spoke with one voice saying, this is not acceptable to us, go back. So the school board did go back, and what they came out with, in my view, was very much of a fair compromise. They did not go to the maintenance budget, which would have kept everything from last year. They cut a whole list of things. It is, by virtually any measure, in my view, a compromise, and I think we should bear that in mind. Um, and finally, I urge everyone, every citizen in this town, to go out, please, on June 8th, and vote, and let your um, opinion be heard. Vote yes, vote no, and tell us, please, too high, too low, or adequate. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> I'll go last as chair. Um, like all my fellow counselors, I want to thank everyone, both elected and staff, who worked on the fiscal year 11 budgets, as well as all the citizens who took the time to share their thoughts with me during this, budget, this year's budget process. It is indeed laborious, but I am count confident that both the town manager and the superintendent and their staffs have brought forth all the relevant data, and that the council and the school board have examined all the issues carefully, whatever their conclusions. I think everybody's looked at it as carefully as they could. I have followed the issues closely and have focused on the following facts when deciding how to vote tonight. One, student enrollment has fallen for the sixth consecutive year. CAPE's enrollment is predicted to fall again next year by 1.2 percent. We will have the lowest enrollment at 1,687 next year since fiscal year 02. Second, school budget spending has increased for more than 10 years in a row at rates significantly ahead of inflation. Next year, school spending will increase, according to this proposed budget, by 3.36 percent. Third, while enrollment has been falling by about 9 percent from fiscal year 06 to 11, the number of teachers has remained essentially flat. Um, it's a 0.3 percent decrease. Thus, spending per student has increased 29 percent in the last five years. It's 29 percent of an increase in five years, and that's a per student spending amount. Fourth, the proposed school budget increase is based on a considerable increase in teacher salaries. The average teacher salary in fiscal year 11 will be $58,315, which is a 5.2% raise over this year. This year it's $55,004. Teachers have offered to contribute $162 of their average $2,900 raise, which is admirable but they will still net an average 4.9% raise next year, an increase in income which few others in our community will see. Municipal employees, other than those under the police contract, will get $0 raises next year. The fifth point I've thought about is that the municipal tax rate will decrease by six-tenths of 1%. The school tax rate will increase by 2.8%, and thus the overall town property tax rate due solely to the schools and community services will increase by 1.8% if this budget passes at the polls. Lastly, this budget's proposed tax increase is within the context of the worst economy since the Great Depression. Social Security recipients did not get a cost of living increase this year. Many people, including people, both parents and non-parents in Cape Elizabeth, have lost their jobs or their homes or are experiencing other severe financial hardships. So I thought about all those things and my conclusion is this. Because the schools received a 12% increase in state aid for education, and because we have held the line on municipal non-school spending, we could have allowed school expenditures to rise somewhat without a tax increase. Instead, 
the school board has proposed a 3.4 percent spending increase, which will both chew up our entire increase in state aid, plus increase our local property taxes. This is not the time in my mind to be adding a property tax increase onto citizens' burdens. I cannot endorse another sizable school spending increase, no matter how good our teachers and school programs are. When enrollment continues to fall and spending per student has increased so much, 29% over the past five years. Therefore, while I support the municipal budget with its tax decrease, I will be voting no on the school budget tonight and no too high on the school budget at the polls on June 8th. I want to thank you and all the councillors and um, encourage everyone, whatever their views on this issue, to get out and vote. It's important to vote on June 8th, whatever you think. And we have another important issue which has to do with Fort Williams and their gubernatorial primaries. It's an important day for voting, so please vote. So with that, I will call the question that's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of sending the, uh, approving the school budget number to send to voters as proposed. Five, opposed, two. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Sarah, number 75 has to do with the proposed fiscal year 11 general fund budget summary motion. I move we adopt the community service portion of the proposed 2011 general fund budget as set forth in our printed agenda. Uh, Do you want me to read it through? It's not the community. I think item number 75 oh. is the whole general fund oh, budget. Sorry. Do you want me to read it through with the numbers? Or people no I, think I, I okay let me just explain that. what it is it's not just community services so so the motion and then we can talk about it I move to adopt the general fund budget as set forth in our packet um, for fiscal year for 2011 fiscal year 2011 okay. is there a second? second it's been moved and seconded is there discussion or comments no okay this is the whole general fund budget. All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Okay. Item number 76. Did you want to propose taking these in a block? Uh, yeah. Do I have to make a motion to do that? <coughs> I'd yes. like to pr make a motion that we take that we take a block uh, of item 76, 2010 through item 82, 2010, all as a group and vote on it in one vote. Through which number? I'm sorry. Through 82. Sorry, 76 through 82. Just to explain, these are the rescue fund, sewer fund, Spurwink Church Fund, Riverside Cemetery Fund. Portland Headlight Fund, the Cape Elizabeth Infrastructure Improvement Fund, and the Thomas Jordan Fund. These are all the special funds budgets. We're just taking them as a block, unless anybody I'll second. doesn't want to do that. Was the motion seconded? Uh, I'll no. second the motion. It's seconded now. Okay, thank you. Is there, is there any discussion or any questions, or does anybody want to pull any of these out? Okay. All in favor of taking them as a block? Seven zero. Okay. So now make the motion for the block, please. I move that we approve the uh, following items in the special fund budget. The rescue fund budget, the sewer fund budget, the Spurwink Church Fund, the uh, Cape Elizabeth Riverside Cemetery, the Portland Headlight, the Cape Elizabeth Infrastructure Improvement Fund, and the Thomas Jordan Fund. Seconded. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 83, <coughs> excuse me, has to do with the Alternative Energy Committee report. Do I hear a motion? Uh, I move that we approve uh, as a designated reserve to be carried over into the fiscal year 2011 sum of 
$420,000 for priority one and two of energy improvements to the municipal buildings for continued consulting work for the Alternative Energy Committee and for the Energy Coordination Services. Is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Our next item is item number 84. Sarah gets to rest on this one. Number 84, which has to do with the collective bargaining agreement um, with local 340 of the Teamsters. Mike, would you like to introduce this? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Swift Kayata. <laughs> you can call me Ann. I'll call you Ann. It's a lot easier. Uh, this is a proposed collective bargaining agreement uh, with uh, the Public Works uh, employees other than the administrative employees other than, other than Bob Malley. Uh, and uh, this is a proposed two-year contract. Uh, there would be no increase uh, during the first year of the budget, the year beginning July 1, 2010. And it proposes a 2% increase uh, in the second year of the contract uh, on or about July 1, 2011. I'm very pleased to recommend this to you for approval. Okay. Um, is there, are there any questions for Mike? <coughs> okay, do I hear a motion? I move we approve a successor collective bargaining agreement from July 1st, 2010 to June 30th, 2012 with the local 340 of the Teamsters covering Cape Elizabeth public work employees. Is there a second? I second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'd just like to say thank you very much to Michael. McGovern, who's our negotiator, and to say that uh, we're very pleased that we have another agreement with the uh, Teamsters Local 340. The folks in that local do great work for our town, and we're very pleased that we uh, have another agreement with them. So thank you to them, and thank you to you, and thank you to Bob Manley also. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Now we have a second opportunity for citizens to speak on items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone who would like to come forward and speak? If so, please come to the podium. If I could real quickly. I, I hear a no citizen. one, no citizens from the audience, but I hear this. Yeah, I just want to remind everyone Memorial Day is, is Monday. Uh, there'll be a parade at 9, uh, followed by the ceremony uh, at the War Veterans Memorial. I want to particularly thank Deborah Lane for all of her efforts in uh, helping to plan that day. Uh, Jim Hubner, who is the overall chair of uh, Memorial Day, does a, does a great job. And I want to single out as well the support of the fire department uh, for that day in particular. They have an open house uh, at the town center fire station following, but it's a, it's a very nice day and uh, let's hope for good weather. And uh, it's, a, it's always a, a great tradition in Cape Elizabeth. And, uh, whenever one attends that event, uh, you, always, you always know the reason you went. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way of remembering all those who have served uh, in the past and who are serving now. And for any veterans in town that may be in encourage town, to, we to, encourage them to participate. To, yeah, there's, a, there's always a, a group of veterans who march. I uh, don't need to make any advance reservation. You just need to, uh, to be there and uh, the, the parade begins. Uh, down at Fowler Road, th this end of Fowler Road, the town center end of Fowler Road. Uh, they gather beginning 8.30 to, 10, to 5 minutes of 9. Uh, good to get there a few minutes early. And uh, march up uh, to the War Veterans uh, uh, Memorial. It's, it's, a, a, it's a great it's event. A great, and again, great. Deb Deborah really does all the work on this in the background. And then Jim arranges with the ministers. And, the other things, but we really want to thank Deborah. Uh, well, she she has nothing to do this week, otherwise, uh, right. <laughs> with the election coming up. So, thank you, Deborah and Jim. I, I have a technical question. Yeah. Are counselors allowed to throw candy to the children? No yeah. candy is allowed to be thrown at Memorial Day. It's a more solemn occasion, I guess. <laughs> My children okay. asked me to ask that. <laughs> we'll we'll bring some to hand to them. Are they are they want to have it, they want to throw it or? Anything, as long as they get uh, their hands on something. Okay. It was a second-hand citizen uh, opportunity for a question. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Seconded. 
It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Great. Thank you. And don't forget to vote and don't forget Memorial Day. Thank you.